Hey dudes, my name's Blaco, and I've been continuing work on my RPG Brawler game, Ex Versa, which is developed in Game Maker Studio 2. But recently, YoYo Games, the company who develops Game Maker Studio, changed the licensing from a perpetual license model to a subscription based model. So instead of buying the game engine and using it for however long you want, you have to pay a monthly or a yearly subscription. Technically, I still get to keep my perpetual license, but this only applies to Game Maker Studio 2. So if they make a Game Maker Studio 3, then I'd have to switch to a subscription model. And personally, I really don't like subscription software. So I switched to the free open source game engine, Goda. So in my last video, I talked about all the work that I've been doing, programming different packages for the game to make development move along quicker. I also said I was ready to start building more of the world. But with the license announcement, I felt like I needed to take a step back and check on the features of other game engines. Not necessarily to switch X Versa, but for future projects. You see, I originally chose Game Maker Studio 2 for X Versa because I used it for my previous games, Beauty McStrongarm and Kiro. But actually, I've used versions of Game Maker off and on since I was 9 years old, which was quite a while ago. I've used other engines in the past, and actually Unity was the engine I used at university, but I wasn't a huge fan of the licensing for that, so I went with Game Maker Studio 2 because it offered a perpetual license, and it's pretty good for making 2D games. But with the license change, I wanted to look around, and I liked the idea of going to an open source engine, because then I don't have to worry about the things a company does to change their product to increase their revenue. There are a decent amount of open source game engines being worked on, and some look pretty good, and some maybe haven't quite made it there yet. The big thing to be careful about with open source software is if there aren't enough people working on it and the project gets abandoned. As far as game engines go, I think the most popular open source game engine is Godot. It has a lot of support and the GitHub repo is very active, which is a great sign. Also, it's written with C++, which happens to be my favorite language. I played around a little bit with it in the past, but I was busy working on my other projects, so I never really made anything with it. I decided to try it out just to see if I was hypothetically going to switch X Versa to Godot, what would it take? And after working with it for the past few days, I found that it really wouldn't be that hard, and with the features Godot has, I'd actually probably end up with a better game. These are the main things that took quite a while in Game Maker Studio 2, but most of them are built into Godot. First of all, there's a really good physics system built right into Godot. Technically, Game Maker Studio 2 has a physics system built in as well, but it's pretty cumbersome, and pretty much everyone opts in to just creating a completely custom one, which is what I've done for all my games in Game Maker Studio. In Godot though, it's really straightforward using kinematic body 2D objects and defining collision masks inside your tile maps. You can also define a bunch of different physics layers, so you can control which objects interact with what. You still get to control how all your movement works with code, but the collisions for things like walls and ground are completely handled for you and work really well, even on non-rectangular surfaces. In the past, I made a video about developing a tagged animation system in Game Maker Studio. Godot out of the box actually allows you to define all your animations for a given sprite with tag names, so you don't have to write anything and you just get that feature for free. For example, if you have multiple sprites that a player can be that all have the same animation tag names, like walk left and walk right, then you only have to write one script for controlling movement animations and use it for all your player sprites. And you don't have to worry about frame indices, since Godot has a GUI for controlling which frames belong to which animation tag. Godot also has a built-in 2D lighting system that works out of the box. What's really great about having it built into the engine is that you get to see exactly what it's going to look like in the world editor, instead of just having to run the game to see your changes. Game Maker doesn't have a built-in lighting system. You can create your own with shaders, but it's quite a bit of work, so most people just use lighting systems from the YoYo Games asset store, 
which has free options. The downside though is that these aren't always maintained, so there's a chance it could break with updates to GameMaker. Also, you generally can't see what your lights will look like in the editor, which makes it difficult to tune them. One thing that I spent a really long time developing in GameMaker was a unified control system which unified different inputs like keyboard, gamepads, and mice and allowed for remappable controls with those devices. Godot actually has a unified mapping system built in. You can just define different event names like move left or move right and tie different inputs to those names so that you can listen to them in your code. This is a super nice feature and makes things a lot easier. For dialogue in my game, and really just all text in general, I developed a localization system, which translates all the text in my game with different languages I support. Godot actually has a complete localization system built in with a translation server, so you can support many different languages and change languages at runtime. It supports a standardized way of doing this, which is better than the solution I developed in GameMaker. I think the biggest headache for me so far has probably been developing a GUI system in GameMaker. To display GUIs in GameMaker, generally you have to programmatically draw shapes and text on the screen, and program how a user interacts with it. There's not a GUI designer or anything built in, so you have to do it all from scratch. I was pretty happy with my final result, but it did take a long time to make, and even still, I have to programmatically design my GUIs so it still can be a little hard to get it looking just right. Godot actually has a really nice GUI designer, so I wouldn't have had to do any of that, and it makes it much easier because you get to see what it looks like when you're making it. And also, it supports the localization system, so if you make a GUI, you can change the languages at runtime. So yeah, after playing with Godot for a bit, it's pretty clear that it has so many features built in that would have saved me a lot of time if I'd just started with it. I think there's also a lot of features that I've yet to make in GameMaker that's just built into Godot, which will save me time in the future. So I ended up implementing my test level in Godot, which is what I've shown before in GameMaker Studio. This level has physics, lighting, animations, and even gamepad support. It looks pretty much the same, and only took a day and a half to do, so I'm really not too far away from where I was in GameMaker, and I'll get to just switch to Godot from now on without losing much development time. GameMaker is what got me into developing games when I was about 8 or 9 years old, when my brother and my cousin and I found an ad for it at the back of a Nintendo Power magazine, so it definitely is a little sad to walk away from it. But I'm pretty excited to use an open source engine and learn new skills using Godot. I still think GameMaker Studio is a great engine, but just for me personally, I think it's time for me to move on. Anyway, that's it, so see ya dudes!